My name is Kevin McKelvin. I'm with a company called Arc Rated Safety. We started this company five years ago to bring new technology to the marketplace. One of the big issues companies have in today's world is when we show up to do work where we're going to be exposed, exposed being uh, interacting with the electrical system 50 volts or higher, interacting mean opening doors, removing covers, using any metering device, turning things off and on at disconnects and switches. When we're interacting with the electrical system 50 volts or higher, we have to address the hazard. PPE is part of addressing the hazard. One of the problems though is this, if you show up to do work and you pull out of your bag a shield that looks something like this, which I caught a guy wearing, or it's all warped or cracked, that's not going to perform the way it was designed. If you have, if you inspect your clothing and you have grease, rips, or dirt, maybe things hanging on it, patches, it's not designed to pr protect you with all that stuff going on. So one of the things you got to ask yourself is, am I doing a pre-inspection on the gear before use? And if I am doing a pre-inspection and there's some faulty equipment, like my shield's damaged, my clothing is contaminated, how are we addressing that? Everybody's policies and procedures should direct them to stop what they're doing and go back to the shop and get something new. The million dollar question is how many people out of, you know, how many people would actually stop what they're doing and go back and get a new shield, go back and address the condition of the clothing and, and make a change to it. Uh, realistically, that's not really happening all that often. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to address it before we we, you spend a penny on any of the gear. So we took the gear out of bags and we created this. This is called PPE in a pail. In today's world, we're either in a 12 or in a 40. We're not dressing to the categories anymore. We're not having a one, two, three, four solution. In today's world, everything exposure wise, when we deal with the hazard, we identify the hazard through a cal rating. What is our exposure? Is it three cal, is it four cal? So in today's world, we're dressing to a 12 and we're dressing to a 40, we're simplifying, okay? 80% or more of all work will be done at 600 volts or less, and this, for the most part, is the kit to be used for that. This is a 12 cal kit, okay? It's got everything I need to be able to open that cabinet and verify for the absence of voltage, okay? So what's great about this is no matter how it's stored, no matter how it's being transferred, the gear inside is always kept in perfect condition. All right, carries as a backpack, and I always have a chair to sit on everywhere I go. Uh, some people like to be able to sit down, take notes, and do some prep work before they get going on the job. Guarantee is when we open this up, everything inside is going to be in perfect condition. I'll pull my rubbers and my leathers out of this thing. This is the ultimate glove bag, so we'll set these aside. If you notice how the shield sits in there, it cannot move. If it can't move, it can't warp, it can't scratch, it can't break. So when I pull this out, it's always going to be gold. All right, hang on a sec. Well, this is called live TV. So we're going to go ahead and decline that and we're going to shut the phone off. The new shields have significant changes to them. Solid one piece, no more knobs holding parts and pieces together. This sits at the chest, does not allow debris into the face. This has a new compound to the Palmar that makes it almost impossible to scratch. Although I did have somebody take a knife to this to prove to me he could get a mark on it. Tell your team don't put knives to the shield can't fog, so that means we can clean these as often as we need to, okay? It's lighter. The key is the new color. It's called highly transparent. I can see my full wire range without any distortion. Some of the green shields and some of the other shields, you can't see certain colors. So when you go to meter, you're sometimes having to lift up to be able to identify what you're doing. Well, every time you lift that shield up, you're now putting yourself at risk. So this will stay down because this will allow you to see your full color range without any problems. 
So this is a 12 kal shield. It's called a, it's called a highly transparent amp shield. It's very effective. Guys love wearing this thing. Okay. In this kit will be earplugs. Any earplugs will do because in today's world, when the shield goes on, the sock hood goes on. Okay. So this will cover your ears. So any earplugs you use will be fine when you're using your 12 cal sock hood. All right. Safety glasses must be worn. So I'll have safety glasses, I'll have earplugs, I'll have my sock hood, I'll have my shield. That's my head protection. What am I concerned about? The condition of the shield. As long as it's intact, we, hit, we didn't do anything to jimmy rig it, it's gonna be in perfect condition at all times. The minute you take this off, I check for the absence of voltage. Every, the hazard has been removed, it's been eliminated. Take it off and put it back. The minute you put it back in there, it's coming out the way you put it in. All right. As far as clothing goes, today's fabrics are so much more advanced. These are the two top fabrics in the market today. This is a seven ounce Tekasite that carries an 11 cal rating. I love this fabric because it's light. It's very durable, the strongest fabric on the market. It breathes and manages moisture. When they do the mannequin burn test with this fabric, it runs about 15% heat pet transfer. Uh, they they, they hit, hit a mannequin for three seconds at 5,000 degrees. Um, this fabric here has about a 15% body burn at second degree or higher. When you're using any of the treated cotton fabrics, they usually run about 35, a little bit 36% body burn. So this will be twice as strong as the treated cotton. This breathes and manages moisture. One of the issues I have with treated cotton is, how do you stop cotton from catching fire? You cover every pore in chemical. So what's the biggest complaint about wearing it? It's too hot, too heavy. It does not breathe, I get wet. We don't want you taking an arc flash at 30,000 degrees with wet garments underneath. Think of yourself as a baked potato, you're gonna cook, all right? So we love this fabric because it breathes, it manages moisture. Uh, and it's so much com it's so comfortable this comes in a lab coat and leggings or a coverall coveralls you know the standards requires a uh, closed system coveralls are great if you're a contractor going from job to job if I'm in an industrial setting and I'm wearing FR clothing all day the problem with wearing FR clothing all day is we call it the primary has to be functional and clean, contaminant free when there's exposure. I go to too many places where the clothing from a, uh, from a condition standpoint, there's things hanging all over it. They've got patches, they've got pens, they've got walkie talkies. The, most of the industrial guys who do mechanical work, they got some grease on it. All of that stuff puts that worker at risk, so we call that the primary is non-functional, okay? So what we do for them is we do lab coats that they can slap a uh, lab coat on and the lab coat just covers everything they got going on and that way it, the primary is clean and functional and ready to go. This is a 12 cal Proterra fabric. It's a nine ounce fabric. Uh, it's inherent, it's easy to care for. Um, between the uh, seven ounce Tecosate, the nine ounce Proterra, both inherent, both designed uh, to be washed at home re uh, relatively easily. Um, I love these fabrics. Um, you have your choice, lab coat and leggings or coveralls. We were just at a big plant last week. They have coveralls. I asked, I gave them the definition of exposure. They're exposed every day. I asked them how many times they're putting their coveralls on, zero. They have FR clothing, it's, it's contaminated. They have to address the primary. They're, every one of them ordered a lab coat kit because they can get in and out of it in seconds. It's always going to be functional and when they need to take care of it, they can. So in the world of flash, if the garment is clean, contaminant free and not ripped and the shield's intact, we've just addressed our head and our body. Okay? The third area of protection is rubber gloves. Rubber gloves have to be tested for puncture before every use. Most people are doing something like this, okay? 
that's effective. I can get a quick air test on it, but I'm only doing half the glove. So for the other half, invert that glove and do what's called uh, blow and roll, invert and stress. Put some stress on it. We were out in Michigan, we were doing this, and when the kid got to this point, his glove tore right there. He had a pinhole in his glove, okay? Pinholes in these gloves are absolutely, makes his glove absolutely worthless. We're wearing this glove for shock. It's gotta protect us from shock. If we're gonna have it on, it's gotta be functional, okay? So the easiest way to check for functionality is, man, I hope I didn't leave it over there. You can edit some of this, right? The easiest way to check for functionality <coughs> is just do uh, a glove test using a glove pump. Now, I'm a realist. Blowing and rolling, inverting and stretching is what the guys will do out in the field. I have, we, we do what's called a sign-up log. We put their names here. We put all the weeks of the year here. And each week they have to come in and they have to sign off that they put each, pair, each, set, uh, each glove right and left on this pump. And the reason we do that is for a reason. At least once a week they're checking them properly it sort of reduces our liability okay and so we'll blow and roll invert and stretch in the field once a week we'll come in and we'll do this just to verify what are we trying to do we're, we're wearing a system that's going to protect us from a hazard shock flash we've got to make sure that system is functional okay if you're not doing proper testing on the system and there is an accident, there could be injury to go along with that accident. What we want to do is reduce the risk of injury. How do we do that? Shields intact, clothing carry arc value at all times, gloves puncture free. So in the world of flash, those are our three areas of protection and we want to make sure that we're checking the functionality of it before use, okay? So this is an easy way to check for um, punctures. A couple additional things on this bucket. In today's world, the 18 standard will say there's no justification to work hot. They want it shut off. So what are we doing? We're now opening panel doors or covers, removing covers, and we're checking for the absence of voltage, okay? So what we like to recommend, and this is just a recommendation, we're not telling anybody their policy, is gather all the tools that everybody has and a lot of times in the past, we issued these big tool rolls with nine inch linesman uh, cutters that are insulated, needle nose. So those are the things we've issued to them. Well, the problem is you issue me all those tools, you're basically telling me I can use them. In the 18 world where there's no justification we're caught, where are we using a nine inch linesman flyer inside a panel that's energized? We're not. So what we want to do is we want to only give them the tools they need to get in and out of their, their uh, cabinets. So this is an insulated blade set. I'll lock that in. I'll be able to take my covers off. I'll be able to check for the absence of voltage. If I need to do anything more than that, when I get an energized work permit signed off, then they can, as part of the pre-planning process, they can give me more tools that I might need to do the work energized. But short of that, I want to control the tools and I only want them to have the tools they need to open things to be able to get in there and test, troubleshoot, and verify. So this is a great toolkit. We don't want it going on the inside. We put it here for a reason. The other thing we built on this pocket is this. We built another pocket out here, a mesh pocket. Rubber gloves, rubber gloves should not be worn on bare hands just because your hand sweats way too easily. If you have grease on your hand, you're ruining your rubbers. And once your hand gets wet, these gloves are hard to get off and on. These cotton liners, they're not expensive. You get a dozen of them for less than $8. It stops my hand from sweating. I, have, I actually feel like I have better dexterity because I'm not having rubber binding on my hand, on my skin. And when I go to remove it, it just slides right off. So cotton liners are a must with rubber gloves. And we built this pocket here because in case they do get a little damp, 
they'll dry right up. So again, what are we doing? We're giving you a system that's going to help protect the shields. The fabrics will sort of guarantee the arc value is always there. And we can help you with your rubber gloves maintaining the integrity of them so there's, they're not going to fail when you're using them. So in the world of flash, functional gear when exposed, head, hands, body, this system is designed to meet your needs and reduce the cost of having replacement parts and pieces. All right.